everyone! This is a video I've been intending to make for quite some time, but it just sort of fell by the wayside with this hectic year that we've had. Um, but as you know, I really love tardigrades, and I've previously discussed tardigrade fossils in a different video, and this is kind of a sequel to that. So today I'll be discussing this incredible discovery that was made in 2019 of mold pigs, which were described um, from microfossils in a piece of amber. Very cool, let's take a look at it. So you might know that tardigrades are sometimes called moss pigs or moss piglets because the terrestrial ones often live and eat and spend most of their lives in moss and lichen. But what on earth is a mold pig and how is it related to a tardigrade? Well, this paper describes a piece of amber from the Dominican Republic, which dates from the mid-tertiary. And the amber piece is only 12 by 8 by 3 millimetres, but it contains just an unbelievable amount of fossils. There were strands of fungi, there were nematodes, a pseudoscorpion, and protozoa, and then several hundred of these other tiny animals, which were given the name Sialomorpha dominicana. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And here they are. And if you'd just shown me this image, I'd straight away assume I was just looking at a tardigrade. Compare this to the other tardigrade amber fossils that exist, and you can immediately see the similarities in the body. They have that round barrel shape, a distinct head, and eight legs. And they also have the setae that are pretty common in the little red heterotardigrades. But why are these fossils not tardigrades? They've been described as having features in common with both tardigrades and mites. And the authors even included a table of comparison, which I'll show at the end of this video. But let's take a, a closer look at some images from this paper. So here we can start to see some differences from tardigrades. Uh, the head is a lot smaller and the last pair of legs isn't uh, right at the back like uh, in a tardigrade. Although the legs in mold pigs are described as generally shorter and often directed backwards. So a little bit similar. But what's interesting is that all their legs lack claws and they end in discs, which can also have a stalk. Uh, so this is getting a bit strange. Marine tardigrades have a kind of uh, disc toes too, so that's sort of a bit similar to these mold pigs, but, but different again. Uh, tardigrades generally have these beautiful claws that can be different lengths uh, or branch, and the claws are really useful in identifying the genus or species, but mold pigs don't have claws at all, so I wonder why that is. Uh, but now it gets even weirder, so here's a picture showing modified hind legs in a mold pig, and just what on earth? It looks a bit like a flea or something, and why does this one have completely different legs? Uh, the paper describes two female mold pigs which have these strange curved legs, but the purpose of them is unknown, and how they even form is unknown, uh, you know, at what point in the life cycle. These kind of modified legs haven't been found in tardigrades or mites before, so for now it's just a cool mystery. Uh, I think it's just super weird and I hope we'll eventually find out more about these really strange legs and what they do. And the paper also describes that mole pigs have a pair of protrusible mandibles and palps. So this is different again from the tardigrade feeding apparatus which involves stylets and a buccal tube and their cute little football pharyngeal bulb. Um, so that's different and uh, much more like mites, although uh, mites have chelicerate mouth parts, so the mold pigs are sort of different again. Um, but a bit more like tardigrades, mold pigs are omnivores, so it was found that they fed on fungi and other tiny invertebrates. So here's uh, another image from the paper. I just love this incredible fossil with an invertebrate actually in its mandibles. That's so cool. This piece of amber is just beyond imagining the amount and the quality of fossils in it. Um, so we know that tardigrades often eat moss and other plant cells, but they can also eat microorganisms too, especially the bigger Milesian tardigrades often seem to eat worms and protozoans. Uh, so it's super cool to see that mole pigs do that as well. Although what's interesting is that a number of these fossils were feeding on fungus spores, so that seems to be their major food source, which is why they were given that common name, mold pig. And just to show you that this piece of amber really does have everything in it, here's a mold pig that was caught in the act of doing a poop. Uh, so you can see these little pellets uh, that are, are coming out. So that's a little bit different to tardigrades, which as we know, have kind of large poops for their body size. It's pretty impressive. 
Uh, but here is where it gets super weird again. Uh, so we know that tardigrades carry eggs in the body cavity and then they're either laid in the environment or in the tardigrades shed skin when they go through a molt. But in these molt pigs, the eggs hatch and then actually develop into embryos inside the body cavity. Uh, they seem to develop until they have six legs and then the juveniles are found living on their own independently and also molting themselves. So just super cool. And what's also very interesting is that there don't seem to be any males. So the authors assume that they reproduce through parthenogenesis, which occurs in a lot of microscopic animals, including nematode worms and tardigrades, where a species can be female only, or there may just be very, very rare males compared to females. Um, but the fact that they only have three pairs of legs when they're in their early juvenile stage is similar to mites, although that's still apparently a rare pattern of development. And it's different to tardigrades, which always have eight legs. Um, from the moment they emerge from their eggs, they have eight legs. Though you might remember, if you've seen my tardigrade fossil video, is that there's this really weird Austin-type fossil of something that's very clearly tardigrade-related, um, but it's considered to be a stem group and maybe a larval stage, and it only has three pairs of legs. Um, and but, but one of them has these folds, which could show that the, the fourth pair of legs develop later on. So I wonder where that might fit in uh, with these mole pigs. Where, where do they sit on the evolutionary tree? I'd love to find out more about that too. And here's the table that the authors included, which compares the mole pigs to tardigrades and mites, so we can see what they have in common and what's different. So it's interesting to note that mole pigs have different eye spots, their leg structure and segments, um, their brain lobes, and their reproductive opening is different as well. And then just one of the biggest mysteries of mole pigs is, are they extinct? Uh, the amber obviously came from a rainforest environment and it contains uh, a pseudoscorpion and nematodes and other microscopic life forms which are still around today. So where are the mole pigs? They're just, they're so similar to tardigrades which are wildly successful animals that are found all over the world and in almost all environments. So are mole pigs just hyper specialized with particular habitat? Are they so specialized that living examples of them have never been found? Or did they go extinct at some point? And if that's the case, how long were they around for? And do they have descendants? And that's what I think is just so exciting about this discovery. It leaves us with even more questions about the mold pigs. So I'd like to thank the authors for their incredible study. And I'd encourage you to check out the full article. I've added the title and link in the description below. So thanks for watching and see you next time.